Hello, everybody. God bless you. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I choose to rejoice and to be glad. Regardless what the outside circumstances are, I have learned that if I will worship the Lord in adversity, my spirit man arises up for the occasion and I get victory in Jesus' name. But when I fall into the gloomy glooms and I start complaining, etc., then things don't go as good as what God wanted it to uh, happen. God bless you, Stephanie. God bless you, Robert. Uh, I'm encouraging people every day to say, God bless America, one nation under God, seven times a day because we're renewing the covenant. Whatever country that you live in, you, you live in Mexico, you need to say, God bless Mexico and make that declaration. So whatever country that you're in, I just want to encourage you to do that and to ask God's blessing. And boy, do we need God's blessing. We want to pray for the state of California with the fires and the rioting that's going on there. We want to pray for Oregon. We want to pray for these different states that are having problems with the uh, with the rioting and the looting, I feel so bad for the uh, owners of businesses where they're just being destroyed. We need to pray and stop it in the name of Jesus. And so prayer is the key. And we're believing God that God would give officials wisdom and knowledge from above. And I pray for government leaders and mayors across this country to have a visitation from God and that God would uh, stop this nonsense and they would receive it in the name of Jesus. We're going to get through this situations. We're going to see victory in Jesus' name. We're going to see great revival in the name of the Lord. God bless you, Anita. Now, what I'm talking about, uh, this is maybe one more time, maybe tomorrow, I'm not quite sure, that I'm dealing with one of the greatest words in the Bible, and that's the word repentance. Now, a lot of preachers, they just preach, you got to repent, and you get scared, and, and they make repentance it's like it's a dirty word, but no, repentance is a good word, especially when you repent. And uh, so we're dealing with four subjects today, repentance, conversion, faith, and good works, okay? Repentance, conversion, faith, good works. So let me read the scriptures to you here. Uh, Paul and Silas were in jail, and uh, this man asked the question, and they said, what must I do to be saved? And it's, they answered him in Acts chapter 16, 30 through 31, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved and your household. And this was the answer that was given. And uh, we're talking today about saving faith. Can fa a, a, a faith that produces no works can it save a person? James addresses this, and let me read it to you in James chapter 2, verse 14 through 20. What does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says to them, depart in peace. You know, have a good day. Be warmed and filled, but you don't give them the things which they needed in their body. What does it profit? Thus also, faith by itself, if does not have works, is dead. So if you say that you're a Christian and you don't do Christian things, then you're, you're dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that there is one God, you do well. Even the demons believe and are trembled. 
But you, but do you want to know, O foolish man, that faith without works is dead? So the kind of faith that we need to have after we have repented. Now, let me say these four things again. First of all comes repentance. Then comes conversion. Then comes faith. And then comes good works. In this text, having faith and believing are synonymous. But as James points out, the kind of faith that produces no fruit is useless. Where once again, if the person says, I'm a Christian, then you look for fruit. And their life, if they are truly Christian, will produce fruit. But no repentance, no conversion, no faith will then produce no works. But repentance, conversion, faith produces good works. It comes, I believe, natural. You just do things naturally for the kingdom of God. So faith or belief that pleases God is true saving faith, is the faith that results in obedience to God's laws and acceptance of his provision for salvation. It is a beautiful story. Uh, James talks about it, that you got to love your neighbor. That would motivate, uh, if we're not if we're not Christian and we do not have works, then we see somebody that, that needs a coat and we don't do anything about it, then there's something wrong with our Christian faith. Because our Christian faith, when we have uh, these fruits in our lives, it is, we're going to do something. We're going to feed the hungry. We're going to clothe the naked. We're going to send Bibles to places that don't have Bibles. So there is going to be a action after our conversion. And if there's no action after our conversion, then we possibly have not really been converted because conversion will bring us into a place of faith in God and good works. So what we're, what we are, um, uh, the main message that, that we have here this morning today is that faith, okay, and then faith leads us into good works. Let me repeat. Repentance comes first, then conversion. I cannot be converted to Christ until I repent. So I repent, then there's conversion, then there is faith, and then there is good works. This is a step, a process that happens, and true faith motivates us to do something. We want, when we see somebody that has a need, we want to meet that need to the best of our ability. And you can tell me that you are Christian, but if you haven't repented, there's no conversion, there's no faith, and there's no good works. So your life, your lifestyle will tell the world and tell me and tell most of all God that you are truly born again. You are truly walking with God. So believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved does not mean that all who have an intellectual about it are saved. There are, there are some people that have an intellect about the Bible, about God, but they don't have the lifestyle to back it up. A man uh, that does not have an experience with God through conversion is lost. He might have a biblical knowledge. It's all in his head, but he does not or she does not have an experience of repentance. I'm sorry to tell you, there are people that stand behind the pulpit on a Sunday that are as lost as the local drunk, that are as lost as the local prostitute, 
but yet they stand behind the pulpit. They read the scriptures, but they are not born again people because there was no repentance. There's no conversion. There's no faith and there's no good works. Now, let me say something to you. There are a lot of religious people that do good works and in that they think that because they did good works that heaven will be their home but that is not the gospel that i preach and that i believe in let me repeat myself again repentance number one number two conversion i cannot be converted to christ until i repent of my sins number three i cannot have faith until I repent and been converted. Now I'm going to have that faith activated in my life. And then will come the good works. You see, I am not going to go to heaven because I'm a preacher. God will not say, well, Gordon, you've preached for all these years. Enter into your rest. No. No, I'm not going to go to heaven because I'm a preacher. I'm going to go to heaven just like all the rest of you that are going to go to heaven is because I repented, then I got converted, then I had faith that was then real faith in God is activated after my conversion, and then I'm going to start doing good works. So the religious systems of this world got it all wrong and uh, according to the word of God. And they, they do good things. They, you know, I, I go to funerals. Please spare me. Ugh. Well, he, lo- he enjoyed hunting and he enjoyed fishing. And he, he was a member of this organization. And he, meh, 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 I'm thinking, oh my God, this guy that's in the box there, I know he ain't there, but I know he ain't where he's supposed to be. And I, I despise sometimes going to funerals because they are so phony. They are so fake. You know, one guy, one preacher was preaching and, <laughs> and he was just saying how wonderful this man is, you know, and he goes on and on and on. And one guy jumped up and looked in the box and said, oh, I, I, I didn't. What you're telling me, preacher, and the guy that's in the box is not, ma- is not matching up, man. And so we have, please bear with me. I really believe the Lord is giving us a message today. And that is, you need to make this clear in your spirit. And you need to also make it clear to people that tell you, well, I'm going to heaven because I did all this nice stuff. I was a part of the ladies aid and I was a part of the, you know, the, and this and that, you know, I'm sorry. That's not the way it works. Okay. And you can complain and fuss at me all you want. But at the end of the day, I believe the word of God and the word of God is what's going to get me to heaven and I'm going to believe it. So let me repeat again, repentance, conversion. I cannot convert to Christ until I repent. Number three, then I'm going to have faith. I'm going to have faith in God's word. So that's activated. Number four, then I'm going to start doing good works. But what does religion and tradition try to do? They try to put the good works in front. Okay. If I do all this nice stuff and I'm good to humanity, and there are some people that are precious. They are good people. Okay. I know them. They're good people. But good people cannot go to heaven until they repent of their sins. They cannot be converted until they repent. They cannot walk in faith until there have been a conversion. And they cannot do good works until they do all these different steps. I mean, you can do good works, but if you didn't do the repentance, then your good works is, is nothing. I don't care how many plaques you get, you know, of the award of the year for being, you know, this or that. 
I don't care how many pieces of paper you have on your wall, on all the accomplishments that you've done, and all of them good, all of them precious, I salute you. But it, the, the mistake that you're making is if you think those plaques, those good works that you've done is going to get you to heaven, I'm here to tell you as a gospel preacher and according to the word of God, you're wrong. You're wrong. You made up the rules. No, 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 no. We don't make up the rules. We follow what God has for us joyfully. So the believing that saves is the kind of believing that results in repentance and conversion. Repentance and conversion. I needed to be converted. What do I mean? That means changed. I'm converted to Christ. I'm converted from living a, 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 a life of sin that was horrible into a life of following Christ. Um, Hebrews 11.1, 1, it, it talks about faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. And, and I really love that. It was the assurance and the conviction that moved the men and women of the Old Testament times to perform positive deeds in compliance with God's will. So when I'm converted to Christ, I'm going to be in compliance with God's will. I'm going to go by the book. The Bible says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Here are some people, Abel, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Sarah, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, and many others obtained a good testimony through faith. In all these examples, we see the principle that James so plainly was putting forth, and that is this, genuine faith is saving faith, is the assurance and the conviction that produces action. Such faith is then inter, uh, it's uh, twined together with inseparable from repentance. So here I go again. The only way that my good works are going to count, and I've been doing good works, you've been doing good works, okay? And the only way I'm going to get a reward for that. So there are people that have, that are rich people that have given you know, okay, they they uh, they have a hospital named after them. Why? Because they gave enough money to get a get their plaque on there. So you know that's cool. You know, if you got that kind of money, and so they built the uh, the hospital, and uh, it was you know uh, named after them, and uh, that was a good work. That was really wonderful. Wow. So think now. I'm doing this, you know, you, you go to the guy's funeral and, uh, and they're reading off all the stuff, you know, that, uh, about him. And then they say, well, you know, um, this hospital was named after him because he gave all the money for it. And, uh, that, that's awesome. That was really neat that that guy did that, you know, and, uh, the, the thing of the lives that were touched. But when he brings that little plaque with him, um, which he's not, but he brings that little plaque and he says to God, he says, look at this, God. I, I, I gave him $2 million to, to build this hospital. And God says, I don't know you. Your name is not written in the book of life, dude. You know, and the guy's going to go away with gnashing of teeth. He was misled. He was misled because he thought he was doing that nice thing that that was going to get him into heaven. Now, if he went and did this formula, okay, repentance, conversion, faith, good works, he would have been rewarded by the Lord for doing that good thing in doing that hospital and man, the crown that he would have received would have been so heavy, he would have had to have a neck brace to hold it up. And so this is what preachers need to preach. They need to preach repentance, conversion, faith, then good works. 
But a lot of churches across this nation, this is free of charge. There was a church in some city that was giving cold water, treats, sandwiches to the rioters. A church was doing that. They were giving that money to these people who are tearing uh, these this food, this water, and that the, the people that are tearing down that city, destroying it. In this church, it wasn't the church of Jesus Christ, I'll tell you that right now, but this church was supplying these people who are looting and destroying a city. They were bringing them water and snacks for the people. For the for the people, ay ay ay, mama, and they they you know and they interviewed this pastor. Now she she may be pastor in name, but she ain't God's servant. I'll tell you that right now, because to me that is giving help to the enemy in this country. That was free of charge. I'm not here for an argument, just a statement. I'm just telling you what I saw. And she thinks that she was doing a good thing. I'm afraid not, young lady. You were not. To me, if there would be a law <laughs> to get her, well, they did arrest the drivers, but she should be arrested as well. She's the one that promoted the thing. Okay, I'm getting off the subject. But she's going to go to her bedroom and say, I done such a good job today. You know, I gave food and gave stuff to the rioters, you know. Give me a break. It's, a, it's, 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 it's crazy what people believe in. We need to get back to the word. But we also, as Christian preachers, need to tell the people repentance is a good word. It's not a bad word. It's a good word, gang. Come on. Because that's how you get to go to heaven. That's how you get to get into the kingdom. And so we need to stress that. When you witness to people, when you share your faith with other people, you need to tell them repentance is a great word. Come on. He'll take all the sin off your shoulders, out of your heart, out of your mind. Everything will be clean like you never sinned again. That's why they call it born again. Yes. Let me say this one more time. Now, I've been told a good teacher is one that repeats. Okay. I'm repeating. <laughs> here, here we go. Number one repentance. Number two, conversion. I cannot be converted to Christ until I repent. I cannot walk in faith until there's been that conversion. And I cannot do good works until I start from the beginning. So it's repentance, conversion, faith, and good works. And then I get to go to heaven. And all the things that I have done on this earth and all the things that you've done that you and I've forgotten. You know, we forgot. I've had people come up to me and say, Gordon, I want to thank you for what you did for me. Or, I'm listening. You know, I don't remember. I mean, it's 10, 15 years ago. I praise God. I thank God. But I know that my God has it recorded. And one day, I'm going to be rewarded. Not because I did good works, but because I repented, had conversion, and faith, and good works. That's the deal. Isn't that good? That'll preach, brother. Hallelujah. Well, I want to thank you for praying for Ramona and I. We prayed this morning. We have our devotions at 9 o'clock in the morning, um, Pacific time, Arizona time. We had communion this morning. I want to encourage you to, to get a devotional life uh, with, with yourself uh, and a devotional life with your with your spouse, if that's uh, possible, or to, and a devotional life with your children, and um, then to have communion uh, once or twice a week, three times a week. And I was brought up, you know, the first Sunday of the month is when you had com uh, co uh, communion, and that was it. Mm -hmm. There's no, you know, regimen, you know. And so in this last six months, I've had communion more than I've ever had in my entire life. So I want to encourage you to do that. And I want to thank you for praying for us as we pray for you. We pray for the people who give to this ministry. 
I'm declaring and decreeing a hundredfold in Jesus' name. Some of my listeners need a financial miracle, and we are praying that God will do that. I want to thank many of you who have been supporting our ministry during this six months. I'm here to tell you right now, had not the people of God responded, our house would probably be in foreclosure. But I'm telling you, the people of God have just blessed my life, and I do not take that lightly, and I bless you in the name of Jesus. And if the Holy Spirit speaks to your heart to give to this ministry, why, you can do it through Zelly, you can do it through PayPal, you can do it through the mail, however the Holy Spirit leads you. No gift is too small. We pray for every one of the people, and I bless you today in Jesus' name. I thank God for the word repentance. Please share that with please share this message with some people. I believe God will touch them as God has touched me speaking about repentance. I know that God is going to touch you and touch your friends. If you have a prayer request, please type it in there. I always go back and look. I'll pray with you in the name of the Lord. God bless you and God bless America. Bye-bye.